Okay, my name is Marge Forster. I'm here with Barbara Miller, and we're interviewing Kathy Philman on February 10th, 19, 2015. <laughs> and to start out, Kathy, we're just going to ask you a few basic facts about, you know, where you were born, your parents, family, siblings. Okay. Well, I was born um, in Coatesville, Pennsylvania, in the hospital there. But I grew up um, in a small, it's a very small place called Logue's Corner. It's the intersection of 82 and uh, Route 10. And, uh, no, not Route 10, 82 and whatever. But anyway, um, we were an um, Irish family that uh, did farming and uh, we had our own business. It was, uh, I, lived with, I lived with my grandparents. My, my mom wasn't around a lot um, when I was young. Um, but, you know, pretty much at that time it was sort of an idyllic life. I, you know, we had ground and we, we had an acre garden and, you know, fruit trees and, you know, all this equipment we played on and we had mounds of sand and dirt and, you know, so my co I didn't have any siblings. It was myself and my three cousins. We lived, you know, my grandparents' house was here, and their house was there. Like a compound. Almost. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, actually it had been a uh, blacksmith's um, home. It was built in the uh, early 1800s or late 1700s, even maybe I forget. But the, the kitchen was like a, the whole one wall was a hearth, and you know, mm. in the winter time, it would get the snow would be over our heads, and the electric would be out, and we'd use that and bring snow in, and you know, melt it for water and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, that part of my life was pretty idyllic. Um, and you mentioned your mother wasn't around a lot. Where was she? She, um, well, my, that generation, my, my mother, my aunt, my two uncles, they were pretty much drunks. <laughs> and uh, so I spent a lot of time in bars when I was a kid, probably more time in, as a kid than I did it as mm -hmm. an adult. But um, so they were, um, you know, they were always out drinking somewhere. But when they came home, that was her home as well, your mother? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I remember as a kid, like, going up to her bedroom and just, like, opening her eyes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> she must have really hated that, but I did it. You know, I just wanted to, to be around her. Mm -hmm. um, my, my father, well, it's not my father, George Philman, um, was... Um, my mother was kind of made to um, marry him, you know, because I was, um, you know, in the 40s, late 40s, early 50s, and, you know, and my mother um, divorced George. Uh, he was in Korea. He came back from Korea because they had to amputate his leg. He had cancer, and the cancer had spread. So, uh, but my mom had divorced him before that, so my mom was, you know, a divorcee in the 50s, which was... You know, when I went to Catholic school, that was like, oh man. <laughs> and they, in Catholic school, I mean, we, my cousins and I, and uh, there was a couple other kids in the neighborhood that rode, you know, went to Catholic school, and um, they didn't like us much there. You know, most of the, the people that went there were, you know, the kids were, their fathers or mothers were doctors and lawyers and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And so they didn't, they felt, um, they could treat us any way we, we wanted. You know, they certainly weren't going to pick on the rich kids. <laughs> so if they get frustrated, they take it out on us. You know, whatever was handy, a book. Of, you know, I in my story I, I refer to them as middle-aged mutant ninja nuns. <laughs> so. So you didn't have any protectors. No, not there. And what? So it was farming that supported your family? Uh, well, it was. Um, my grandfather had started out as a farmer, and he ha he got um, rheumatoid arthritis at a very early age, and so I think you know when the kids got older they helped, but they couldn't you know they couldn't keep it. So that's, I think that's when they bought the, the blacksmith's place, and um, we had an acre of farm there, and uh, we rented ground for a while and and uh, planted tomatoes and beans and stuff like that, and then sold them to uh, Hunts. Um, and then we get these big <laughs> cans of, you know, um, vegetables and things like that from them. 
and then we can, you know, everything, which that was pretty cool. Yeah. So my do you still do you still can? Uh, I haven't. I I can, but I haven't in a while. I haven't um, I haven't any garden for the past few years. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had a lot of medical issues going on, so. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm pretty healthy now, so uh, this is my last week at PT. <laughs> so I'll be able to do a garden okay. this year. So you're in Catholic school until what age? Again? Um, I went to seventh grade, so I guess about twelve or so, and then um, it was, it, you know, it was like hell on earth there. My what made you I, make the switch? Um, I, I, well, there were two things. I would, my mother had married um, um, Clarence Snyder, and he was a, a, a sergeant in the army, and so they traveled. And again, I stayed with my grandparents, and um, so at I would visit them in the summers wherever you know wherever they were. <clears throat> And so um, they were in West Virginia um, when I when I left, you know, I went down for the summer and, um, you know, not realizing that they were always on their best behavior when I was around. It was, um, I really didn't want to go back to Catholic school and I really wanted to have parents because I had never had parents. You know, I love my grandparents to death, but it was, you know, it wasn't the same as having, you know, everybody else had parents. <laughs> So I asked them if I could live with them, and they said, yeah, you know, so I did, and uh, again, that was hell, because they were, they were both drunks. My, he was a raging alcoholic and very abusive. Um, so that was, you know, until I was 18, that was pretty uh, traumatic. Being around that all you didn't feel you could go back to your grandparents. Um, no, because they had, by that time they had sold the place and they were you know living in a in a trailer. Mm -hmm. um, you know they retired and so uh, no, I didn't I didn't feel like I could go back there. And you know at that time we, they didn't talk about abuse and, and you know they always um, you know if you called the police or stuff and at that time there was only the state police so it'd be you know hours before they got there. And then they would just say, well, you know, he's having a bad day, try to, <laughs> you know, but, um, yeah, I mean, we'd have knockdown, drag out fights, and he would, you know, pick on my mom, and then, then I would get mad, and <laughs> so that went on the whole time I was in high school, and as soon as I was 18, I, I, I left. And what about your identity and your sexuality? How well, did, I think, did that come? well, I knew, oops, sorry. I knew at um, about age five that I was different, <laughs> but I didn't know what that meant. And um, I remember uh, in Catholic school, um, somebody called somebody queer, and I didn't know what that meant. And I asked my grandmother, <laughs> and she said, that's when men and women do bad things. So I still had no clue <laughs> what queer was, but I wasn't allowed to use that word. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I mean, as a kid, you know, growing up and watching TV in the 50s, you know, it was all um, Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers and, you know, um, all the guys that, you know, and, um, but all my, I wanted to be like, you know, suave and debonair. I didn't, I didn't want to be the, the women. I always had crushes on them. <laughs> so, um. And, and my cousins and I would actually, like, we would watch a, a war movie or something, then we'd go out and act it out. You know, well, if we watch a good movie and we liked it, we'd go... <laughs> Play soldiers. Play soldiers or, you know, act out whatever movie we had watched. That was kind of, you know, that was fun. So, you're age five, you know you're different. At what point did it become more clear to you? Um, when I was in high school, mm -hmm. you know, all my crushes were on women there. And um, there was one particular woman, woman we had, uh, we would write notes back and forth. Um, but I had no, no inkling that she was gay. And then I found out later that one of my friends that I, you know, in high school that I hung out with, that I knew was gay, um, they had had an affair. And um, the woman's parents found out about it and, and really um, ostracized her. And I guess everybody in school knew it. I didn't know it, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I was friends with her, and so then people started calling me queer, and I was like, you know, what, what did I do to, 
that you would, you know, think that, but that's because mm -hmm. I hung out with, you know, this woman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so in terms of your family's awareness? Um, I came out to them when I was 21, mm -hmm. and the first thing out of my mother's mouth was, what did I do wrong? I was like, well, I can think of several things, <laughs> but nothing to have having to do with me being gay. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, when I was 21, I came out. And you, were you still living with her at that time? Oh, no, no, mm -hmm. I, I left when I was 18. Oh, that's right, you did yeah. say, sorry. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it, um, it really wasn't a, a big deal other than my mother saying, you know, oh my God, what did I do wrong? But, um, you know, my aunt and uncle who helped raise me, they, they embraced me and, you know, even though it was against the religion, you know, I grew up Catholic. And, um, and my mother, you know, she, she accepted it. And, and um, my mother stopped drinking when she was like 50, stopped smoking, everything cold turkey. And, um, you know, we, we had a great relationship after that. Wonderful. And she actually moved up here um, so we could be closer. And uh, so she died in 2009, but she would come over. Uh, we would do like the, the New York Times crossword puzzles together. And, and uh, uh, you know, just she would hang out here. And, um, and she got, uh, well, she had cancer like four times in her life and beat it every time. But this last time she had uh, lung cancer and she couldn't beat it. But she, she stayed with us. We, we, you know, we were her caretakers. And um, it was cool. We had. Uh, the women's chorus came in and sang to her, and um, J.D. Womack, who's a, who's a friend of mine, she came in and played uh, some country songs that you know my mother loved, and um, it was just it was just great, you know, having her here. So. Well, that's wonderful. It's great you could be there for her. Now the other side of my, I mean, my mother's um, uncle, my mother's brother, my uncle, and his wife um, were really um, nasty about it. You know, they, they taught me that water was thicker than blood a long time ago. <laughs> and uh, even though, um, I mean, we we had uh, uh, our own baseball team, softball team, and there was, um, you know, it was like more than half of it were, were family members, you know, cousins and stuff like that. Um, and then we had a couple other people that wanted to be on our team, and uh, they were gay. and. Um, my aunt just harassed them until until they didn't want to play anymore, mm -hmm. and so, and it's you know it's still to this day I don't really you know I'm polite to them but I, I have no desire to be around them or. And are they <laughs> nearby? They they live um, well they live in Elverson. Um, they also have a house in Florida and they have one up in the mountains. Mm -hmm. So. So you left home at eighteen. Um, what was your career path at that um, Well, I had been, um, I had got a job at Pepperidge Farms, and I was working there in the midnight shift, and um, I took a year off, I worked at Pepperidge Farm, and then I went to uh, college uh, in Lincoln University in Oxford, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. and I was going to be a gym teacher. Um, I got in about two and a half years, and then my mom got sick again with cancer, and um, she had, um, they had taken her lymph glands out down here, and while she was in the hospital, the Hemavex, you know, that was, was supposed to pump things, uh, weren't working right, so she got an infection. Mm -hmm. And so uh, my next stepfather was too uh, too cheap to um, have a nurse come in, you know, because she had to have the wounds debrided every day and mm -hmm. repacked and stuff like that, and it had like three times a day. So um, I quit school and I, I took care of her. And I worked at Pepperidge at night, and uh, um, she got better, but you know the money was good, and <laughs> I didn't go back to school. Mm -hmm. So I worked at Pepperidge for a few, for quite a few years, uh, for a few years. Um, went to school, and then um, worked at Pepperidge while I was doing that, but knew that, you know, that that wasn't for me. So um, I had various and sundry odd uh, jobs along the way, um, but. I got these books on massage, and that really interested me. So um, I started reading, and then I would practice <laughs> with my friends, and uh, and they were they were real good sports to let me do that. 
And uh, so I did that for a while, you know, while I was working, you know, other jobs, and there weren't any massage schools to go to at that time that I, you know, I knew of, not in this country anyway. And um, um, I, I had I had um, worked for um, the Hess organization, the the gas stations, mm -hmm. and um, I was an assistant manager, and then. Um, the woman that had hired me, she left and she went to Atlantic Refining and Marketing Corporation and then she called me about being a manager so I did that for um, probably 10 years or so. I was a um, general manager, I had stores in, down the main line and um, um, up in Ephrata and Lancaster and places like that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and how was your work? relationships in terms of your sexual identity, were they cool with it or was um, there Yeah, issues? I mean I didn't really, you know, I didn't really talk about it with, with uh, the woman that hired me to begin with was gay. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I don't know, I always, I tried to hire gay women because I knew that they were uh, competent, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and I had um, twice in my, um, my uh, history there. I had two perfect audits where everything was in place and I don't think that's ever been done. <laughs> mm -hmm. But just, you know, hiring competent women in sensible shoes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as Robin Williams said. <laughs> okay, well it sounds like smooth sailing in a way. Oh yeah, and, you know, it was my hippy dippy days so, I, you know, we, we partied a lot. I, I tried a lot of different things. Um, but there was nothing, you know, the only thing I really uh, liked was smoking pot. <laughs> I never really liked anything else. Um, and um, after that, in 1990, you know, I worked pretty much the 80s, late 70s, 80s, I worked for Atlantic Refining and Marketing Corporation. Um, and I left there, I just I just couldn't take it anymore because it was like an old, good old boys network there. And um, I knew as a general manager I had pretty much gotten as far as I was going to get in the company. And, and they had no problem like ripping off your ideas and you know taking credit for it and stuff like that. So I just I gave them my two weeks notice. I had no idea what I was going to do. And a friend of mine had a, a horse farm. And uh, you know I grew up with animals and horses and riding and stuff like that. So. She said, you know, come and work for me until you figure out what you want to do. So I did, and then that was backbreaking work from like 5 a.m. to, you know, 6 at night and <laughs> all kinds of stuff, you know, hauling and cleaning and grooming and mucking out those stuff. Mucking, stalls. yeah. And uh, so I started looking in the paper and I saw this, this uh, job for John Barnes' myofascial release. And, you know, I'm thinking it has anything to do with the face, and you know, and they were looking for an aid, and I was like, well, you know, I could do that, because um, I had, you know, I was making pretty good money working for Atlantic and Refining Organization, and, and then it was like downhill from there. <laughs> um, but anyway, I, 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 um, I took, I went, I had scheduled an interview, and um, I was working at the barn, and the person that was supposed to relieve me never showed up, so I had, you know, I couldn't leave. So um, the next time, you know, I rescheduled the interview, I told them what would happen. They were very gracious about it. So the next time I <laughs> scheduled the interview, um, the person that was supposed to relieve me was late. So um, I didn't get to go home and, you know, change, take a shower. I went right to the interview in my horse clothes, <laughs> smelling like, you know, whatever, horses and dung and all kinds of things. Um, but. I got the job, mm -hmm. and you know, having no idea what it was, but it was John Barnes, uh, who is a um, pretty much a world famous uh, PT. He started my fascia release, mm -hmm. and uh, so I got to I, I worked there. I got to be his aide, and um, uh, he. Um, when you first start to work there, you have to take the first class so you know what you're talking about when you're talking to people, and um, for me, this was like. <gasps> This is, you know, this is what I've been looking for. This is the missing piece in massage. So, um, I, you know, I, I started, I took all his courses and I got to be, um, um, help teach 
you know, the courses and stuff like that. Not teaching, but, you know, his help out with the his courses. Teaching his own staff? Yeah, teaching. Well, te no, not his staff, but teaching. He's taught, uh, I don't know, thousands and thousands of PTs. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, once he saw how well I had adapted, you know, as a massage therapist, um, he started teaching, opening it up to more people, massage therapists, and uh, uh, anybody that has a license to touch, dentists, um, you know, doctors if they're willing, nurses, you know, all kinds of people. Um, and it's just, you know, it's, it's just so amazing being, working on the connective tissue and, and putting a person's body back in space when they've been, to, you know, the way it should be, when they've been told that, uh, you know, there's, there's nothing you can do, it's all in your head, you know, we've, we've given you pills, we've tried everything, you know, we, we've did surgery and nothing works, so it's all in your head. <laughs> you know, we've done everything we can. And so it's just amazing to see people, you know, go from being bent over like this to, you know, being like this. So um, that's and what I did. At this point, where were you geographically? Um, he, he, his office was in Paoli, but I was living in Reading at the time. I had a house in Reading. And um, so I was commuting quite a bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I loved the work. So, But in, in 1995, I was like, you know, that's, um, it's time, you know. And so I'm, I, I met Kathy and, and came up here because this was a good area, you know, he doesn't, didn't have anybody up here doing anything. And uh, so... Uh, so you had your own practice or you worked with yeah, someone else? Yeah, I, oh. I had my own practice. But you're retired now? Yeah, I have a retirement disability. Mm -hmm. I have um, rheumatoid arthritis and diabetes and mm -hmm. um, I just had, well, this year, last 2012 I had knee replacement surgery. Um, and then this year I had, uh, in, in April I had crushed my big toe, and shattered the bone, and then I had a hernia surgery, and now I'm just um, done with, uh, I had um, reconstructive surgery on my ankle. So um, um, this will be my last week of PT, so. And are they doing it right? They are. <laughs> Good. Is, there any, is there anything you can actually do for yourself? Oh, yeah, I, I work on myself all the time. <laughs> so, and uh, Jane is very much into essential oils, and so she's been teaching me about those, and I've been using those. And this year, uh, the thieves that you smelled when, when you came in, uh, that's a really good uh, antiseptic. You can, you can clean with it, and um, it's really good for your lungs. So um, I had put some on my hands, and, you know, you inhale and, and exhale it out, and... Um, Everybody's been sick around me, and I haven't been sick at all this year, so I'm a happy girl. <laughs> Good. So, um, have you been an activist in any way? Oh, um, way. Well, yeah. In my um, in my um, earlier days, we 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 did a lot of uh, protesting, and um, it was it was scary during those days. I, I remember um, there was a bar in. Um, a gay bar, the first and only gay bar in the area. I think it was in uh, Pottstown, mm -hmm. and um, you know you had to. They had kept the door locked, and <laughs> you had to knock to get in, and you know you had to say who you were, and you know just it was it was crazy. Um, and one night we were there, and uh, it had been snowing really bad while we were in there, and um, somebody came and uh, busted out the windshield of one of my friend's cars, mm -hmm. and. Um, and you could see the footprints, you know, I, I wanted to call the police and follow footprints and, and nobody would do it because it was a gay bar and, and uh, you know, they didn't want to get in trouble and, <laughs> you know, so it was, I mean, we went there, but, you, you know, it was scary, you never, you never knew. When did that sense of fear start to taper off um, for you and your friends? Well, I don't know that we... It was scary, but I don't know that we were ever fearful. Um, we, I mean, I have friends, um, of, you know, that I've known for 30 years, and you know, we we sort of, you know, grew up together from our, you know, 20s and 30s on, and um, um, I don't remember any of us ever being really fearful. Um, we always stood up, even even when we harassed. You know, we always stood up for ourselves. So, so you had a good support system. Yeah, we did. And that helped. That helped a lot. You know, we did a, a lot of stuff in Philadelphia. Um, 
you know, in the, in the beginning, um, protests and um, marching and parades and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, when I came up here, um, I mean, you know, I met a lot of people. It was a really, really good community. I did a lot of work with the men's chorus and the women's chorus. Um, I did a lot of stage managing, you know, for them. And, um, and I've stage managed a couple times at the Whitaker Center. Um, but I've got, you know, kind of, kind of retired now, I'm taking it easy, and um, you know, I still, I still go to Pride and and that kind of stuff. I haven't marched in any of the parades. I've been a, you know, a looker. <laughs> It's your festival. You That's can right. enjoy it. Right. So you have some hobbies. And you know, you have other things that occupy your time now. Um, yeah, I mean you know, the last few years there's been a lot of medical issues, so um, you know, I have I'll have my gardening and um, um, I'm hoping this year to I, I belong to an organization called Soul Support Systems. Uh, it's a non profit organization that um, it's uh, having nothing to do with any re particular religion. It's just a, a spiritual um, people, <laughs> uh -huh. and we um, we do. Uh, we just bought 95 acres in North Carolina, and we're going to uh, put put a retreat center there. Uh -huh. So it's um, it's pretty incredible. So that's going to be my hobby this year. Is, is working on the move? land. Are you going to move? Uh, maybe eventually we'll move down there. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, that's the plan. They're planning on putting, you know, housing and stuff in. And locally, do they meet in a building here? Um, well, we've done um, we've done stuff here. The 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 founder is actually in Vermont, um, but we usually. I mean, I we travel all over the world, all over the country. I've been to England, Ireland, Scotland, uh, France. Um, you know, traveling with, with soul support, and it's really um, teaching people that we are all are connected, you know, and we can connect very easily on a heart level, and um, and uh, sort of reintroducing you to your soul, you know, re, um, and we have different modalities for that, but one of the, my favorite is called soul recognition, and it's a, it's a way to, um, to have a safe place to to let go of anything you don't need to hold on to anymore and um, you don't you know whatever's stopping you from going forward in your life you know whether it's um, you know victimhood um, and, and and in all my time as a kid and all the the, the the tough times that I had you know I, I never I never felt like a victim um, you know and it, it didn't it never, you know, until you, I guess when, you know, when you get older and you start listening to, um, you know, what psychiatry and everybody has to say, and at that time, you know, everything was blamed on the parents. And, but at some point, you know, you have to take responsibility for yourself. And, and um, you know, and I, I guess I've always had that responsibility, you know, had that responsibility because a lot of times it was, you know, okay, who's the mother here? You know, is, is this the mother or am I the mother? Because there was a lot of times when I, when I took care of, of my mother. So I've always, you know, been that, sort of had that responsibility. I never, you know, I never blamed my mother. I, I knew that she was doing the best that they could, you know, at the time. Mm -hmm. So um, so with soul recognition, um, and we've been doing it lately in uh, warm water pools where you have the, the uh, degrees, this probably has nothing to do with any of this, but <laughs> but anyway, um, we use um, you know 96, 94 to 96 degree water and bring you into the water, and there's always uh, at least four facilitators with you. People have been trained in this work, and I've been doing this work now since 2001, um, and it's um, I always think of it as a chance to rebirth yourself, you know, and it's it's. Um, doing whatever you need to do, whether it's yelling, screaming, cursing, crying, you know, whatever you need to do to get rid of all that anger that, you know, we've always been told to stuff, you know, you're not good enough, you're not pretty enough, you're not this, you're not that, you're not athletic enough, you know, whatever it is. And we, we take that in as, as kids and we stuff it, and we stuff it. And, and as adults, you know, we're stuffed up to here and, and, you know, you get like, I don't, you know, you just want to, you're just angry all the time, or you know, you know, or or you, or you're, you know, you think you're a victim, 
Mm -hmm. In victimology, you know, when you when you're a victim, your brain releases chemicals that feel good when people are like, oh, you know, oh, I'm so sorry for you. You know, you went through all that, and so it feels good, you know, <laughs> to be a victim. But it's it's in the long run, you know, you need to to um, take responsibility and get rid of all this crap. And so this this allows you to do that in, in whatever way, and we, we do it with you, you know. Yeah, if you need somebody to struggle with, we'll struggle with you, you know. And and it's just amazing at the end, to, you know, we, we, we take pictures of what you look like, you know, it, before you start, and then we take a picture when you're done. And it's just to see the um, the change in people, you know, the radiance that, you know, they sometimes, and, and we'd say, sometimes you look 10 years younger. <laughs> Yeah. So, it's, you're, you've had a very interesting career path, and you're still pursuing different things. That's very exciting. Oh, yeah, you know, you're never done learning. And that's right, <laughs> lifelong learning. Yeah. And you, it's interesting that you're helping people with this work, yet you yourself didn't feel that you had baggage to cast. Well, out. you always have baggage. Yeah. I mean, I, I you know, but when you I did my but you worked your way through it as yeah. you went. It yeah. sounds like. Yeah. Did you go through the process yourself? Oh yeah. Okay. And um, you know, I've, I've done soul recognition several times, and each time is different. Sometimes, sometimes it can seem really violent. It's almost like you know, people think they're, um, um, you know, what is that when the head turns? Exorcism. Yeah, exorcism. You know, and uh, but it, it it's not. It's just just really letting you let go. You know, helping you. Um, you know, we're not doing it for you, but we'll help you do, you know, whatever you need to do. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, some people just lay there, <laughs> and it's like, uh, okay. <laughs> and are there elements of Wiccan? And, no, you know? uh -uh, that's nothing to do. I mean, if you're a Wiccan, it doesn't matter. Yeah, so um, it's just but it's, all yeah. different, people from all different um, backgrounds. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter what your religion is, you know, what your uh, BS is, the belief system or... Mm -hmm. Bullshit. <laughs> you know, really, really, um, all we, all you need to know is, um, you know, we're all, we're all connected. We're all, you know, it's, it's one race. It's the human race. You know, it doesn't. You know, we all came from the same place. Whether you believe, you know, God or, or whatever you believe in. Um, mm -hmm. You know, God is God. It doesn't matter whose God it is. <laughs> or right. if you even believe in God. So what is the biggest change you've seen in your history regarding LGBT issues? Um, well, I mean, everything's out in the open now. Um, I mean, before everything was so hidden, you know, you, you, you didn't let strangers know that you were gay and you didn't, you know, you, you went to a gay bar looking over your shoulder. Um, you know, you, somebody found out you're gay, they could harass you, they could uh, fire you. I mean, they, mm -hmm. they still can, but it's, you know, people are, are just, uh, um, I think, becoming more conscious. At least um, everybody but the GOP. <laughs> um. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us about in your journey? Um. Well, I can, you know, like when you were saying what the changes, I mean, uh, uh, young people coming up and, and coming out at an early age and saying, well, this is who I am, and, um, and you know, standing up for themselves, being brave, um, you know, I just, I, I think that's just a wonderful thing, and um, um, just, you know, it's a wonderful community up here of, of uh, of people and and there's always somebody if you need help, you know there's always somebody you can call to help and that's one of the things, you know I love about this area, um, and just you know just people in general being more conscious and, and aware that um, you know it's it's um, you know like they say in the Bible there's two um, two um, Two things in the Bible uh, says you know talk about homosexuality and, and what you should do and there's like seven or eight things about uh, homosexuals <laughs> you know that they they should be aware of and uh, and people are being you know they're they're stopping 
stopping taking the Bible literally <laughs> and, and picking and choosing, you know, what to use. Um, not everybody, but, uh, you know, it's a lot more open for people. And, and uh, with Unity and, and, and places like the UU Church that accept, uh, and even, you know, other religions. I'm, I'm, I'm not a religious person at all, um, but I do, um, I do love my spirituality. <laughs> Uh, and if, you know, people want to, um, I mean, it just seems like organized religion to me has, has um, really done more harm than good. And, uh, you know, having, having been raised Catholic in the 50s and 60s, <laughs> I can attest to that. What do you think of the current Pope? Um, I love him. I, I just, uh, you know, he's, he's what a Pope should be. You know, he's uh, giving back to the poor, you know, not just talking about it and, and, um, you know, speaking his mind and just telling people, you know, get over yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I was wondering, um, you were saying how, how positive you think the changes have been. Mm -hmm. Has that been a surprise to you? That some um, of the things are... No, it, I mean, I was, I was very surprised when um, um, uh, Pennsylvania said, "Yeah, you know, gay marriage is fine." I mean, that was a surprise. We thought we'd, you know, be waiting a few more years for that. Uh, so that was cool. Um, but that was—I mean, it's—it's it's, you know, it's—it's it's been a gradual change. And as you know, as as my generation has gotten older, um, you know, we've we've gotten more outspoken than we were. You know, the baby boomers, and uh, so it's it's you know each. Each generation has gotten has gotten easier because of what the, the generation before them did. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I think it's gradual. I'm going to say the only real surprise was um, the gay marriage in Pennsylvania. Mm. Are you finding anything for yourself now as an older person that you need? Um, or that you didn't expect or, you know supports or services or things that are out there that you're finding you you can get or can't get or is there anything? Um, I, don't, uh, I don't think there's anything out there that I, I couldn't get if I needed it I think you know this area is pretty um, pretty well covered with you know whatever whatever you need um, you know I know there's um, there's a few lawyers around here that do elder law and, and you know, LBGT, um, you know, rights and, and um, you know, friends of ours just got their wills made out, so we were talking about, you know, having that done and, and having gone through with my aunt and uncle and, uh, you know, um, being power of attorney and being, you know, their, their advocate. Um, it's, that part is interesting because it's teaching me a lot mm -hmm. about, um, you know your, your needs as you get older. Right now, there's not there's not too much I need. I just you know I just want to be healthy and and get out there and and get the garden done and you know get the house taken care of and things that I haven't been able to do. How about with the medical community? Because you talked about all the health care mm -hmm. the issues that you've had. What have you found in terms of acceptance, in the, or have you come across anything? No, I really haven't. Everybody's been, uh, um, you know, it's the Pinnacle Health System that, that I've been using, and, um, um, you know, we're very frank with our doctors, and, and um, you know, I've never felt like, oh, you know, I've been slighted, or, mm -hmm. or you know, that somebody had a problem with me, or... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I guess I've been lucky. <laughs> but it's also, too, uh, I think, you know, how you present yourself as well. Um, so I guess I'll go one step further with that. So how do you feel like you present yourself that you maybe don't have, haven't come across some of that and, and some difficulties that other people have um, talked about? Well, I, I don't know. I think I'm pretty easy to talk to. Um, I'm a good listener, and um, you know people people talk to me. <laughs> you know people, you know nurses will come in that I don't even know and talk to me, or you know people in the grocery store will just start a conversation. And and you know I think it's you know I think it's uh, maybe not how you present yourself, but the the sort of energy that you're putting out there. So if you're putting out positive energy, 
um, you know, and, and it's not fearful and, and, you know, you're not pulling in because you're afraid of what's going to happen. I think if you just open up and, and let, let that, um, you know, them feel your, your positive energy. And I think, you know, I think we all can do that. It's one of the, one of the big things we teach, when, you know, in, in soul support is, is how to feel your energy and how to feel other people's energy mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, how to interact with it. Um, following up on what Barb was saying, what about um, you and your partner? Have you found any um, legal hurdles? Like if you needed um, her to be a available to you during your health crises. Mm -hmm. Has there been any issues like that? No, absolutely none. And, and, um, now, are again, you, do you have legal paperwork? Like, is she your power No, we attorney? haven't, we haven't, uh, well, not yet. When we, when we, when we go get the will done, we'll, we'll do all that. Um, um, but there's never been any problem about, you know, her coming in or, um, I mean, the, the only reason that we haven't, gotten married is because of um, she's on disability she was a teacher and, and had a brain injury and couldn't teach anymore and um, you know with my health issues um, it's financially we're better doing it this way than if, if we combined everything mm -hmm. so I just wondered like there's the HIPAA the health care privacy act you mm -hmm. know so if she would call the hospital if you were in the hospital well she's on her. all the that paperwork okay. so every every everything like that you have has put her, her name, name on, on it. it yeah okay what changes remain to happen do you is there anything you'd like to see happen yet well i, I mean i'd like the 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 whole world to to just you know take a breath and say you know we're all humans it doesn't matter you know whether you're gay or straight or, you know, bi or transgender, you know, I just, I would like the whole world to say, be, just be who you are. And, uh, um, I mean, that's, that's the biggest thing. I think it's just, uh, you know, I'd like to see some changes with, uh, you know, and like every state to, to offer, um, to marriage to people, you know, if they want to be married, um, you know, and, and I'm sorry if our, um, you know, our, if our wanting to be married, you know, messes up strange people's, you know, for, for uh, marriages or something, you know, and <laughs> so. <laughs> and I, one thing you met, that came up that you didn't experience is that there is still that issue of employers mm -hmm. and making yeah. sure that they can't fire someone arbitrarily for yeah. their sexual orientation. Yes, that and, um, um, you know, housing, I mean, they could still throw you out. So, yes, I'd like to see um, that addressed, and I hope um, Governor Wolf, you know, will, he seems like a pretty good guy so far, so I hope yeah, he I'm encouraged. Mm -hmm. I liked his ch choice for Surgeon General. Mm -hmm. Is that mm -hmm. the right title? Mm -hmm. So, All right. If there's not anything else, I want to thank you for sharing your story, Kathy. Mm -hmm. And... Um, if you think of anything later, you can let us know. Okay. I hope you got something you can use there. <laughs>